build me a full stack SaaS application which tracks my portfolio or stock portfolio progress and fetches the price of Bitcoin. Go. There are three main categories for what I've learned building this auto GPT project. Number one, it is possible. Number two, it's inevitable. And number three, it's here. Let's start with it's possible. The project manager is now getting to work and has delegated a concise task over to a solutions architect. The solutions architect is now putting together the project scope. So everything that this website that this auto GPT is going to build might need. And so the solutions architect has tested all of that and has passed it over to the backend developer. So now that the backend developer has the spec sheet, there's a junior developer who's now going to go and write the code. Of course, this is all happening automatically. Now that some initial code has been written, the backend developer is now reviewing its own code, but now it thinks it's a senior developer reviewing a junior developer's code and it's making improvements on the original code that it's written. The backend developer is about to check their own code. If the code doesn't work, it will rewrite all of its own code. So we've written code that writes its own code, checks and corrects its own code. But for AI safety reasons here, it's asking for a human, i.e. myself, to approve it to go ahead. And let's take a look here. And indeed, here it's written in Rust, an entire backend server managing stocks and users and prices, etc. So it has literally built me the web server application for a full stack website, letting us create stocks, read stocks, get the list of all the stocks, update stocks. Everything here has been written for us with login and registration for users as well. Quite phenomenal. Now let's go and see if it actually works, if its code will actually build and run now that we've checked that the AI hasn't run anything dangerous and we've passed the AI safety checks. One, go. And it passed. And if it didn't pass, what would have happened is it would have gone and found the bugs and rewritten its own code without me having to correct anything, which is super cool. Right now, AutoGPT, which is the name given to this agent, and that was inspired by the AutoGPT project and also the Prime Agent YouTube channel, is putting together a JSON API endpoint schema. So it's going and understanding all the endpoints now that it's built on the web server and building a JSON file that either myself can use for building a front end or a front end web developing agent could use. And here we go. It's tested the web server. It's actually launched the web server. It's called a couple of endpoints here as well. And it has successfully passed. What an incredible time we live in. Let me go and have a look now at that endpoint schema and the code. So here's all the back end code that it's written. And indeed, I can go and open this terminal and go cargo run. And indeed, this web server is now running. How fantastic is that? And if I go over to the actual code for this auto Jeopardy agent as well into schemas, here are all the API endpoints that we could call for our web server. Now, if I look down here, I could, for example, call forward slash Bitcoin price, which is a get request. And let's see if that actually works. Now I'm going to be using Postman because there is no front end for this website. The scope of Auto Jeopardy is it's a specialist at building web servers. That's what it does. And so what I'm going to do here is just go and hit send. And there we go. It's given me the latest price of Bitcoin, meaning the thing actually works. How phenomenal is that? Large language models can be too general. And we've seen this with other auto GPTs. If you give them too much to do, too big a task, too vague a task, they're kind of a jack of all trades, but a master of none. The other issue is that when you ask something like chat GPT to give you some code, it'll always give you some extra blurb. Here is your code, even if you ask it not to, etc. Another challenge that I had to overcome 
was code errors. These large language models don't know how to code everything perfectly, but they're pretty darn good. So GPT-4 also makes mistakes. Also, when building web servers, we're relying on API endpoints, and sometimes it picks endpoints that either you have to have API keys for, that you might not have, or they simply might just not work. Another challenge is also AI risk. We're writing programs that run themselves. Those programs could technically do anything, and that's here now. And whether or not you agree with AI safety being a risk or not, if you agree that it is a risk and we do something to prevent it, then we stand a good chance. If we think it's not a risk, but it actually is, we could face some kind of catastrophe, either locally or globally. And the final challenge could be a costly one. Let's say I make a mistake somewhere in my code and I'm running tons of requests to large language models where those requests cost money and something in my code is inefficient or ineffective or just frankly broken. So let's tackle these one by one. The first one with being too general is that I decided to build an auto GPT agent that is a specialist. And I'll come on to why I think this is going to be an exceptionally big field. By designing a specialist, it was able to build a web server really, really well, rather than an entire website that no one would use. To deal with the blah, blah, blah problem, this is where a really exciting part came in. And this is special thanks to the Marvin GitHub project and the Auto GPT GitHub project that inspired me to learn about AI functions. This looks like an ordinary function, but it's not. This function is turned into text and sent into the large language model. We use the hallucination of the large language model here to our advantage to hallucinate a result it thinks would be correct and tell it to print what this function would print and only what this function prints. And that helps us get rid of all the blurb and all the wrong structuring, etc., of the responses from the large language model. And what's even better is we can get it to respond in the exact structure, the exact object, syntax, everything that we need to pass that output into the next function, whether the next function is an AI function or a regular function. And I talk a lot about this in the Udemy course for how to build the auto GPT agent. So to handle code errors, simply what I did here was just to have it find out what the errors are and self correct them. So to have to build a project, figure out why it wouldn't build. And then there you go. And once the project built, I would actually have it run the project and run tests against that project. And that proved to really be great, not only in terms of cost savings so that you're not having to run the same request multiple times to get a result, but also in troubleshooting as well to see where do these agents really fail and what are some of the packages, etc. I could pre-install to avoid that happening. Now, in terms of API endpoints being an issue here, what we did is have it run tests and actually run the server run tests against those endpoints. And if those endpoints returned a 200 status back to us, then they were passed and allowed to be used. Otherwise, they were discarded. To help with the AI risk issue, simply what I did here was just put in a human check. And yes, this is flawed because as people, we are lazy. As a programmer and a coder, I am lazy. But I think it's worth doing just because as these agents become more and more and more intelligent, like I said before, we don't know what the ramifications are if we're wrong. And finally, in terms of faulty code, I chose Rust as the programming language to use. And yes, I know most of these GitHub repositories out there are all written in Python, but I love working with Rust despite any politics that are happening with Rust right now. I found Rust to not only be extremely efficient and memory safe, I also found it to be great with forcing me to handle errors, which saved me a tremendous amount in runtime costs that would have come up in testing during development stages. And this brings me to the second part here, which is it's inevitable. Let us take a look at just our web server example, which uses three agents, a project manager, a solutions architect, and a backend developer. And those agents just run specific tasks. You can also build an auto GPT that creates task lists 
and runs tasks against that task list as well. I have done both. You could mix and match both approaches within your own auto GPT solution. And you could also deploy ideas like tree of thought prompting or having multiple agents prompt at the same time and another agent pick which answer might be best. Each have their trade-offs, their benefits, their costs, etc. If we can design an agent that can build web servers, we could also design agents that build a front end, the web server, and even specialize in databases, maybe even another one for authentication. And so we can build auto GPTs that are extremely good at specific things. If we can have auto GPTs do that, we can write AI functions that call them and are given to a more generalist auto GPT, which coordinates building websites. So now I could just ask that auto GPT to build me a website, maybe call REST API endpoints to a web server, a front end and a database auto GPT agent. If we expand our minds as to what's possible for us as programmers now to develop, it can go even further. We could design an auto GPT that connects to the website auto GPT, the content creation auto GPT, the accountant auto GPT. And before you know it, you're able to start and run a business from scratch in a fraction of the time and a fraction of the cost as to what it would have taken you before. Which brings me onto my final point. It's here. You've just watched me with an MVP from my laptop at home, go and ask a computer to build me a web server and test it. And it worked. Now, the good news is for those of you who have supported Code Raiders and are members of Code Raiders or Crypto Wizards, you can go and download this immediately. This is all saved over at the coderaiders.com website. So thank you for your support. And also, if you want to know how to build this, there is a crash course in both Rust and how to build this exact auto GPT in Rust using ChatGPT and OpenAI on the back end. What a time to be a coder. See you in the next one.